Welcome to another episode of Coaching Football with Brian Clee. Here in episode 14, it is time to look at how we use our base 3-4 personnel to play an odd slant front, which is movement into what most coaches call an under front. I really consider this our base front for a couple of reasons. Number one, I think we can effectively defend any formation, any blocking scheme with it. Number two, we end up teaching all of the techniques that we would need to play any of our multiple fronts by playing the odd slant front. We got some of our guys up on the line of scrimmage playing a, a base technique where they're striking the, the linemen in front of them. They're reacting to the block. If it's a reach block, they're stretching it, maintaining their gap to the sideline if needed. If it's a down block, they're going to squeeze it, look for a kick out block inside to spill. If they're running a slant technique, they're going to slant across the face of the lineman that they're lined up on and, and aim for the next lineman, looking to run things down from behind or spill stuff coming back at them. And then lastly, in the back half, the secondary and the linebackers, we can play all our matchup coverages with this front really, really easily without too many extra calls or checks of any sort. I want to briefly thank a couple people, first and foremost, the guys that I've coached over the past five years, especially here at Coloma, and, and all the guys I've coached over the past 17 years. I also want to thank um, my uncle, Kerry Messing, who got me started as a volunteer coach at, at Reese High School, where I was able to work under head coach Bob Saylor and then defensive coordinator Bob Bouvet. We were running the underfront during all five years that I, I coached there and really prefer the underfront from that initial teaching. Just it, in my opinion, just does really, really well matching up against fr offensive formations that are, are using a tight end. And then especially when they get into two back, one tight end, 21 personnel type formations. Um, and then also a, a brief thanks to Jerry Gordon, has a great book out on the underfront. It's really influenced my, again, preferences of, of how to play defensive football and, and, and using the underfront and principles of the underfront when playing defensive football. So without further ado, let's get into some film of the concepts and the effectiveness that the underfront and, and using an odd slant front to get to it can provide a defense. Real quickly, our defensive philosophy, there it is. If you haven't heard me talk about it before, go back, check out episode 13. It's in the link in the description down below. We want to get all 11 guys to the ball. Our front rules and checks, outside linebackers are going to be setting themselves as force. The number of detached receivers will determine who is playing force opposite that outside linebacker. And anytime we get zero detached receivers, we're in our hard cover too. So that overrides any outside linebacker force. In this episode, we're going to be looking at our nose 54 slant, which is our odd slant front. Our secondary is checking the coverage based on the formation. Our force is going to be set to the strong side based on numbers. And then if numbers are balanced to the field, we'll make that quick stud or bob call with our outside linebackers. Our force to the weak side is away from the numbers and then into the boundary. It's either inside linebacker or defensive back. Again, the number of detached receivers is going to determine that. Our strong side alignments are a wide nine technique. What I think we get out of this front is we're setting a harder edge compared to when we play our zero, 3 0 3, which is our version of a tight front. A uh, 5 tech in C gap, and I consider the 0 tech strong because he's, he's stunting slanting into the strong side a gap weak side alignments are a six technique by the outside linebacker and a four technique by the end or tackle and all the even techniques the zero four and six are slanting to the next offensive line to the strength call inside linebackers are playing their base 30 technique and they'll make a quick tank call to close a gap if they have to widen to a 40 or 60 tech to be able to either play force or help reroute uh, number two receiver against two by one pro we would have numbers to the field so we'd have a stud call we've got one detached so we're in our man coverage on the boundary side we got one detached again we're in man coverage the safety can walk down and play force 
from a five by five alignment against two by two with a flex tight end. The numbers right now are towards the boundary, so we would be in a bob call. We can play our read coverage to two detached receivers. We got one detached on the other side, so we're in our man coverage. By game plan, we could have the stud stepping to strike the offensive tackle, which might give that free safety a, a really quick fastball read of become a, a, a secondary force guy if the flex tight end would happen to try to down block on our stud linebacker. Or if we're a little bit more worried about sweep, we might have our stud outside linebacker here step straight into that flex tight end. Our first clip here is going to be against sweep. We got no detached receivers to this side of the formation. Our stud is initially playing force, but we get that hard call out of our secondary, so it's cover two force. The stud linebacker is focused on, on making sure he strikes that tight end who's coming in motion, or a wing, I guess, is coming in motion. He ends up in the gap, gets penetration upfield, and, and because he knows he's got hard cover two behind him, he's able to pull his trigger a little bit faster and, and be more aggressive, not worried about getting reach. Um, same guy, no detached receivers. You see the guys communicating. We're in our hard coverage. That means the, the stud can be a big-time spill guy. He doesn't have to be the force player. Um, numbers are offset to that side, and they're bringing jet motion, so he's the initial force to the wayside. Um, we would end up in safety force as the receiver goes into motion. Stud linebacker is upfield through the tight ends block, ends up making a great play in the backfield. Let's check out the end zones shot. So he gets that down block from the tight end. It'd be nice, our four tech, um, we haven't always played a five tech, and that's, that's why I think I'm going to start doing it. I want him in that C gap. Bottom line, by being in uh, our slant front or an under, we're going to get a double team, typically out of a lot of teams on that C gap defender, and we got a double team on our nose, which is going to keep those inside linebackers clean to run if the ball would actually get out, and our outside linebacker, because we got hard cover two behind him, he knows he can be a spill player off that tight end's down block, gets up field. Be nice if he was inside the first. Our inside linebackers make him fix him up, make him better, and we make a nice tackle for a three-yard loss. So now we're playing the T, and I, I don't think they put this back episodes uh, one through seven when I talked about the T because we're going to get sweep out of them, and that's not a typical T play. We're slanting to the left side because they got a really big offensive tackle, and, and we. Stretch the play out to the sideline. End zone shot will show even better. So we're actually playing 5-0-5 five, five in, inside, but we're still going to slant. We, the backside five's aiming for the guard. The, the backside nine, I think we had him aiming for the offensive tackle. Our zero tech nose is at, aiming for his guard. We got our five tech in C gap, and our stud linebacker is a nine tech playing D gap. We're in hard cover two again. Reach block, our stud has set the edge. You see our five tech is in D gap. Because of the nose slanting towards the guard, they, they had a double team on. Our inside linebacker is clean to run. Stretch it all the way to the sideline. Corner provides force, and we end up making the play go for negative two. Here we go against Lawton. As they uh, pre-snap, we should be in stud force already. Uh, I believe we're playing uh, double five techniques right now. Our stud starts to set the force, and then the tight end goes away. He starts to chase it. It'd be nice if our five tech was doing a little bit better job hip-pocketing the pulling tight end as well. Our backside five, let's take it back to the start of the clip. Our backside five is aiming for that offensive guard. He gets inside his tackle. He's in his B-gap on the backside. And, and the, this is something that I like about the slant is uh, you're setting a real hard edge to one side and you're running things down from behind on the backside. If they come back at you like they do to our 5-tech, 
things are spilled. That ball cannot get back out. It'd be nice if our Bob linebacker would have, would have spilled this as well. But the 5-tech makes a heck of a play. He's across the tackle's face in the B-gap, and, and we make a heck of a stick on 4th on and 1 to get off the field. Nice to see our guys pumped. Uh, we're slanting for give the stud linebacker here. Um, he got substituted into the game. He's used to playing the boundary. The the Bob linebacker is also used to playing the boundary, and, and we were following the tight end. He should be up on the line of scrimmage on the outside shoulder of that, that tight end, but he, he's used to playing the boundary, which he was by game plan off if he was uh, – to the boundary side without the tight end. We were trying to follow the tight end with our stud linebacker and our, our starters off the field right now. Our backside four is aiming for the offensive left guard. Comes across clean, the tackle can't reach him, and he runs down a very fast ball carrier from Brandywine. Nice athletic play out of that kid. Our end zone guy didn't put the end zone camera up so that the angle is not great here to see him come along and, and run the play down from behind. Again, strength of the front is you're setting a hard edge immediately, especially if you get some sort of either inline tight end or flex tight end or, or, or wing or slot, and you're running things down from behind trying to cross face on the backside. So if we got motion, right now we're balanced up, so we'd initially be in stud force. The second we get this motion, We'd make a quick left-left call, and, and we'd start slanting to the left. Our outside linebacker sets the edge. We've got our C-gap 5-tech actually gets reached, but our inside linebacker reads the closed window, fixes it, almost makes a play in the backfield, maybe getting held a little bit, and our safety does a great job of pulling his trigger because our 9-tech Bob linebacker is forcing and setting the edge and, and making the alley really small so the safety comes up with a textbook profile tackle in, in the backfield for a one-yard loss. And right now there's the reach block on our 9-tech, keeps his outside shoulder free. That's a very clear run read. That guy's not going out for a pass, so the safety's able to pull his trigger and, and come out and make a stop on, again, fourth and three. Here we go with ISO. We get a quick shift. This is against Schoolcraft early on in the game. Their running back uh, is an absolute stud. ISO's coming at us. We bottle up A to D gap, force the cutback, and playing the cutback is our inside linebacker, our, our will linebacker, I believe. Do we have, we don't have the end zone set shot. Here we go. We get motion to the field. We would already be in the stud call. We make a quick left-left call because there's a definite strength now. Um, if they would come back to the boundary with the motion, we'd make a right-right call. Our stud linebacker is stretching the reach block by that flexed tight end. Our 5-tech end is in C-gap upfield. And right now, we've got what we want. We've got that guy running to the sideline, not gaining any ground, not turning a corner because our outside linebacker is working pretty hard to get there. We missed the tackle. There was a chance for a five-yard loss, but our safety right here and our inside linebacker in pursuit. Safety comes down, secondary contain force, and, and makes a stick, uh, makes a nice uh, ankle tackle. And he gets to do this because we got that nine tech. Right now he's engaged with the receiving threat. That receiver is definitely, he's got his shoulders turned. There's no chance he's releasing for a vertical pass. Our safety confirms it, keeps working downhill, and, and makes a tackle on the back hip here as they approach the sideline. Another clip against Schoolcraft. We're going to have a sweep to the top of the screen. Right now, they in kind of a funky formation. They got uh, guard tackle on this side. On the other side, they've got guard tackle and a covered up tight end. I don't remember if they put the eligible guy here or over there. Um, and then they're going to shift motion the flexed tight end over. Our nine tech 
is upfield through the tight end's outside shoulder. He's in his D gap, forces the wing to make a block. We're skying because of the motion. There's there's not much that, as far as numbers back to the backside. We're trying to run things down from behind up at the line of scrimmage. You see our safety pull his trigger from his sky position, misses the tackle, but our outside linebacker keeps working and, and makes the tackle for just a no gain. Really good spot for us as the defense looked like about a one-yard gain to me. Next clip against Lawton. They've got their numbers into the boundary, so we're making a, a Bob Bob call. I believe we followed number 88 around when they were in this uh, flexed 2x2 uh, two two set. Jet motion is coming. Our 5-tech does a great job with the step and strike. He's in C-gap, probably about two yards upfield on the outside shoulder of that tackle. The 9-tech is turning the flex tight ends block back inside. Stretching it to the sideline, and our 5-tech makes a nice tackle for a one-yard loss, or a zero-yard gain, excuse me, on, on second and seven here. We're slanting to the, uh, where, where they got the tight end? We should be slanting down here to the right. Our, our outside linebacker should do a better job of being on the outside shoulder of the offensive tackle. And again, because we've got the zero tech nose, we're getting double teams. Our inside linebackers are downhill and our backside linebackers clean to make a stick for a zero yard gain. Again, the camera could have been up, but anytime you get end zone film is good. So blocks coming right at Adam. Right now, our, our nose could have slanted harder into that A-gap, but because that guard has to double-team him because we've been slanting, the backside linebacker, as he confirms ball away, you're going to see him show up. Great job by our Mac linebacker on the lead block, and we make a stick for zero-yard gain. Good pursuit from the backside uh, four technique as well. Here we go, uh, playing Delton. Uh, this is not in the C-clips from the first eight or so episodes because they're, they're running a dive. We're slanting to this offset back, and then we've got a version, essentially, of in, instead of a hard cover two, we've rotated because they got all the numbers to this side. And our five-tech is slanting into that C-gap, our nine-tech's in D-gap. And again, we're keeping, even though our nose is getting pushed back, we're keeping our inside linebacker at the point of attack clean. Comes up, makes a good stick. He's a wrestler, so the ball ball carrier goes down for a one-yard gain. And again, that's the slant front or moving into an under front lets you have a great edge at the point of attack and, and be running things down from behind, which keeps those inside linebackers clean. Fullback dive to the right. Our backside four does a great job crossing face, ends up completely missing the tackle, but our backside Bob linebacker ends up inside the tight end, and, and we end up making the, the dive spill all the way out to C-gap. One more time. There we are inside the tight end. I'd like him to aim a little bit more for that tackle, but the tackle's really working his butt off to get our four-tech washed down. Fortech almost makes the play on his own. Bob Linebacker runs right into it, and the secondary provides great support from our hard cover two. End zone shot. Again, the goal of the front. Hey, there's a definite strength over here with the wing. They've got two extra blockers compared to one blocker if you're just counting tight end wing um, since the backfield's balanced. So let's slant this way. We're hard cover two on both sides. Um, we really got double force uh, to the wing side of this, and we're going to be able to run it down while setting a hard edge. Ball is designed to hit that backside A gap. Our Fortech closes the B gap and A gap. C gap defender comes down. Our inside linebacker is clean because we're, we're running into things from the backside and, and a bunch of secondary help because we spilled the ball out. Trips bunched tight. We're slanting to it. Five Tech is uh, in C gap. They're running kind of a pin and pull type scheme. 
Really good running back. Spill him out. Stud linebacker makes a tackle. Run it down from behind. Let's see who is that our inside linebacker we keep clean, I think. Nick here from the Will linebacker. He gets a guard pull. He works downhill. Our Mac linebacker, uh, Ian, ends up working downhill. We keep him clean because we're slanting and, and resetting the edge. Comes across and actually tackled the, the guard there. It would be great if he would have found the ball. We, we'd probably get this for uh, a no gain or, or a shorter gain um, if he actually finds the ball. Good job of, of setting the edge against the pin and pull sweep. Trap to the fullback coming to the bottom of the screen. We're slanting. So I, we're playing corner over, and instead of slanting to the numbers, we had it schemed up. We wanted to make sure we were slanting always to the tight end, one of those small game plan adjustments. Actually, let's go straight to that. And by slanting to that tight end, we knew trap was probably more likely to come back to this weak side because they were more a uh, power encounter to the strong side there. Our four tech ends up squeezing it down and makes the tackle as the ball carrier didn't spill himself. It'd be great. We'd have even something better. Our inside linebacker, we keep him clean, our will linebacker. If he hits this now and comes downhill, we'd make this stick for... for a no gain or, or maybe a one-yard loss instead of getting run over for the last three yards of, of the play. So we're in our hard cover two. Stud linebackers fighting that reach block of the tight end, making the wing feel like he's got to come up and, and block and help set the edge. Our corner's outside of all of it. And then we got great pursuit by the guys in the slant. Our backside four and our, our front side five end up uh, taking the play down. Here we go. Sweet coming to the right here. Offset back, flex tight end and, and split end. So we're we got three over here. We're in a stud call, left left, especially with the motion. See our sa safety kind of getting ready to, to roll here. Outside linebacker does a great job setting the edge. Gets his gets pushed back a little bit, but but because he set that edge so hard on the tight end, and he's upfield playing his D gap, the outside shoulder of that tight end, he's forcing the lead back, the offset back, to also block him, which is keeping our inside pursuit clean. Let's the safety know he can come downhill. Uh, outside linebacker rips off everything, starts to make the tackle, and our, our clean inside linebackers come across and, and make the tackle again for a, a short game, a three-yard game. Another jet going to the left here. We'd be in a Bob 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 call. And now, because that Bob is, is playing off that tight end, he comes down, spills things because that tight end was down blocking and, and was occupied by our C-gap end. Our safety's pulling his trigger, comes downhill, and makes a stop for a three-yard gain. And, and this was something that on scout film against these guys, uh, they had put the outside linebackers of, of a previous opponent in a bit of a bind um, because we're slanting to this and, and occupying the down block of that tight end. It lets their safeties pull their trigger a little bit faster. So we got the secondary rotated because they got their numbers to the side. We're slanting to it. We're going to put our five tech in the C gap. He ends up basically on blocked. We set the edge with both our corners pulling an extra fast trigger and our uh, Bob linebacker. Five tech ends able to run it down for a short three yard gain. 13 is our call to just line up in an under front instead of moving to it. If maybe we got a uh, situation where we're just really confident with our guys playing base techniques, not having to worry about them getting washed. This is something that we would potentially call. Uh, just like our odd slant or what we call nose 54 slant, 
Um, we've got a stutter bob call that's setting the force to the numbers and then the field. Away from that, the inside linebacker DB is going to provide force based on the number of detached receivers. Our strong side alignments are a wide nine technique to set the edge and, and be hard for a tight end to reach. And then a five technique and a one technique. Weak side alignments are going to be a six technique and a three technique. And our inside linebackers would play 30 techniques against a two by one pro set. They got more numbers to the field, one, two, three. So we'd make a stud call, stud is force. The free safety or whoever the safety is on the, that side is keying that tight end. And they're going to make the block reaction of our outside linebacker correct. So if we get a reach block, we're filling in the alley. If it does ever get reached, the free safety will fix that and, and become secondary force. If the stud gets a down block, the tight end has to block that five technique right away. So it, when we spill it, which we still teach our outside linebacker to spill in this situation, the free safety again becomes secondary force off that block, and he's able to pull his trigger pretty quick because of the five technique. Uh, on the backside, we've got our, our three and our six technique, and the deep safety is playing force. Both sides are checked into man because we have one detached receiver. And what that under front does against something like a wing T set here, or a, a, I think a good old fashioned left or 900 formation is what most T teams would call this, if not just simply wing left. Um, it forces them to make down blocks right away. And if they don't make, make that down block, they don't get that wall of down blocks forming, it provides us an opportunity to get a run through to. to find a missed block somewhere. I think our five technique here is upfield, squeezes his tackles down block, the tight end for some re reason releases straight up the field, and our five technique is completely unblocked, able to make the tackle, at least make initial contact, and, and we give up a short three yard gain, almost a tackle for loss, simply by lining up and playing our correct technique. Five Tech squeezes down, shows up in the backfield way earlier than he planned, misses the tackle. Our corner and safety can start to pull the trigger because that wing is down blocking our nine technique so hard. And they miss the kick out, and again, we're in a really good spot. Once again, uh, wing right this time, 100 formation or, or right formation. They're going to be running trap, and against trap, we're occupying the play side a gap which is where they want to go our they don't get our five tech trapped great and we run it down from behind with our three technique get the end zone nope no end zone all right uh this is against delton kellogg and and we're overplaying right now that tight end is i think around 300 pounds and big tall strong kid Thought he was going to be lining up at offensive tackle. So we game plan to put a 9, a 5, and a 1 where they're more likely to run their powers and their traps, trying to match them with our, our biggest and strongest guys in outside shades, and then playing a 3 and a 6 technique on the right side here. They end up running dive back to that 3 technique, Three technique does a great job with the double team, splits it some, and, and really squeezes the guard back into the A gap, closing it. Our six tech, uh, I believe he's playing Bob outside linebacker. It doesn't matter as much as against the T. Does a decent job with the strike on the tight end. The three technique is keeping our inside linebackers clean. Our will linebacker does a great job reading closed A and B gap. Scrapes just a little bit outside to the C gap, is first on contact. Our our corner is able to get involved really quickly because our outside linebacker did a great job striking the tight end, and, and we get a bunch of hats to the ball and, and get the dive, the quick hitting dive tackled for a two yard game. We will use an under front at times if we get maybe a no huddle situation and we just want to line up and strike our targets and play. They're going to run trap to the left here. Our 
one technique is set to the field. So in our terminology, this would be stud, our stud outside linebacker there, 13, one to the strength, three to the weak side or, or the boundary. And what I don't like is we're out leveraged by this down block. We could be off the ball definitely uh, with better pad level, but our one technique does a great job keeping the inside linebackers clean, especially the backside one. And the ball has to cut back because of his strike. Now counter, again, we're 13 to the field is, is the call. Stud 13. Puts the one to the field, the three weak. Our five comes down, spills it. Ball goes out wider. And because of our alignment and our strikes, the inside linebacker to the top of the screen comes clean and is able to make the play. Right here, Mac linebacker sees down blocks by his guard because that one immediately is, is getting down blocked by the, the guard. Our The tackle releases to the backside linebacker who's trying to get across. But the fact that our Mac linebacker is there is clean. He's able to come up and make the tackle. 13 to the field again. We should be making a tank call. So that way our, our Mac linebacker can play B gap and we close the A gap. Our Will linebacker is, I believe, head up on number three there just because the lineman's kind of tight and he, he's trying to reroute number two. Number two ends up running a little bit of a bubble or now screen. We call it a hot screen. Since the five technique is trying to get outside to the perimeter, our Bob linebacker does a great job treating that like a reach block ends up running it down and one thing again that I like about odd slant and 13 we're, we're playing one of our base coverages right now e, we're in cloud to this we got our safety key in number three our corner can have a fast trigger our other safety is, is ready to get over top of the corner um, we're one on one on the bottom but that's a, a track kid all state track guy at, at corner could have been a little more aggressive from corner, but great great play by our outside linebacker from a five technique. Here we got power coming back to the right. Down block by the guard on our one technique. Our Mac linebacker can pull his trigger because of the back block and the guard pull and, and full flow coming. Our, our backside linebacker is clean. Should come more downhill to get a, a tackle for loss as opposed to a gain but we end up in pretty good position. Our one could have had a little better pad level and, and been driving this back probably, but we keep the linebackers clean to make the play. And again, we're, we're able to play our base coverage. We're, we're clouding the trips to this side over here, which, which gives us some help in the pass game or, or perimeter screen game. Another 13 to the field. We'll have counter coming back to the bottom of the screen. Down blocks, our, our three technique starts to hip pocket it. Our five technique is, is upfield a little more than I'd like. It'd be nice if he's spilling. But right now you can see both our Mac linebacker and our Will linebacker are completely clean. They're able to work downhill and, and be in position for the tackle. And again, that's... The, the strength, I think, of playing the concept of the under front or an odd slant. You, you keep those linebackers clean because you're taking away some of the gaps, and, and especially at nose. So right now, we got sweep to the field. Our, our one can do a better job redirecting. They got, I believe, both the guard and the center pulling out here. They got the running back leaning out. We get a good crack replaced by our corner. If our corner would come up, and set a real hard edge here. This thing would be stopped for about a four or five yard loss, um, and we'd ha he'd have to cut back to the pursuit of our, our inside linebacker. I believe that's our Mac linebacker. Unfortunately, our corner peeks inside. Um, if you were watching our five tech, does a great job fighting the reach right now, 
But this ball's taking so long to get out here. He pauses for a second to look back inside instead of just winning his C gap, forcing the ball to cut back to unblocked pursuit. And our corner doesn't set a hard edge. Again, getting the ball forced back to hard pursuit. So what should have been a four or five yard loss ends up turning into a five yard game. As always, guys, if you Next have questions, questions or comments, comments please GT. leave them down below. Mm -hmm. I'll get back to you as Pre quickly as possible. Calls. Check me out and follow me on Twitter at Coach Klee. Um, don't forget to su subscribe to the channel if you Next like what clip, you see. Counter GT. And we if you have uh, anything that maybe requires a longer response, um, hit me up at CoachBrianKlee at gmail.com. Thanks as always for tuning here. in. See you again.